Well, my son is December 21st. Okay. He's three hours away from being a Capricorn. Yeah, he's he's yeah. very cuspy. Solstice. With a Scorpio rising. My son's Scorpio rising. Really? Yep. We'll and have to Libra talk moon. about that. Oh, well, he has such a good chart. He has got the most calm energy, and he has to tell me to simmer the fuck down. Mm-hmm. He'll be like, it's not that serious. Mm-hmm. You need to calm down. I'll get all fiery. He hasn't come into his fire. Mm-hmm. Oh, so. he sounds amazing. You he, guys are so cute. I see you on your Instagram. Yeah, but he's, you know, going to be 15 this year. And so he's very much separated from me and yeah. his own person now. And it's it's a lot of grief. Oh, my God. I, I'm sure. <laughs> and you had him young. 22. Right? 22. Mm-hmm. Wow. Well, I have to come to you for all the boy mom stuff (laughs) because part of why I had an emotional night last night is because my son, Atticus, fell off of my bed, basically on my watch. I'm like, maybe I can run for one second, literally one second into the bathroom. He's sitting still. He's been sitting still for 30 minutes. He's kind of under the weather. He's never still, but he's like sitting still. And the second that I turn around he's like face planted into all of my computer chargers and stuff and yeah he got a little banged up and it was just very I felt so guilty Mm -hmm. and I feel so guilty right now and there's been other stuff going on and I've just been really emotional and is this normal as a boy mom do I have to get used to this yes you do and I'll send you this poem, I'll find it, but there was this woman who wrote this poem of what it's like to be the mother of a son, and you might want to wait to read it, because it will knock you. Oh, I need to wait. I've been crying all day. (laughs) But (laughs) she was talking about how it's like going through a breakup over and over and over again, Mm -hmm. because once you get used to that one version, you don't even know that it's leaving and it's gone, and they're a totally different version, you know? And we do our job well, though, by raising boys if we get to a place where they no longer want to cuddle with us and they no longer want to be but then that's like wait hold on we were just like watching a movie cuddling on the couch and now you don't want to do that Mm -hmm. but we don't want them to do that because we want them to like (laughs) go off and I know (laughs) I'm like do I want him to do that for (laughs) his whole life yes but no I mean he's one and a half so all I can imagine is like I don't ever want that to go away I know but of course when he's an adult man I want him to be thriving and independent and to have this healthy bond Mm -hmm. that I can really hold in my mind's eye I want to talk to you all about the mother stuff but before we do let's introduce you to the soul on fire audience you came in from oklahoma to do this podcast and i'm honored i'm just so happy to see you in person i had an incredible reading with you like how long ago was that a couple months yeah we did yeah evolutionary astrology cosmic mapping german new medicine Mm -hmm. it has become an obsession Mm -hmm. of mine and here you are now so tell us tell us about you i'm really excited to be here and uh yeah be in this space thank you for inviting me i feel very grateful today and also very emotional as well but just like gratitude yes Um, so i grew up in oklahoma and i grew up in the city and on the farm with my grandparents so i have that uh, duality that i really love now i'm going back to five acres on land where i'm going to create uh intimate retreats but uh, i do retreats around the country there's three scheduled for this year and uh astrology evolutionary astrology So it's uh, not bound by time and space that we're here having a human incarnation with dharma and karma and we meet people like you and I, which totally know we've we've done this before. Yes, (laughs) absolutely. (laughs) Yeah. And um, it's psychology, you know, it's the psyche of the human and uh, all the many different personas that we are. But the charts based on, you know, we're born, we sit up. We crawl, we talk, we walk. We have these evolutionary processes, but it's also not linear. So we go back to certain places. So we get to see in the chart, okay, like I have a heavy first, second, third house. I'm here to really focus on I am, I value, I communicate. Mm -hmm. And so we get to see those evolutionary processes. 
in human beings. Um, I work primarily with women on the womb. I'm a birth worker as well, holistic birth worker. And um, just all of the pain and the trauma that we store in that space. And of course, the throat. Mm -hmm. And so I've had to have my own experiences with my thyroid and my speaking and my throat and my chirons and Gemini. And so it's been a journey, but it all led me to now being of service and doing the work that mm -hmm. I do. Mm -hmm. So beautiful. We have so much to dig into there. <laughs> I'm like evolutionary astrology, thyroid, like I want to talk about all of it. And I remember when we had our session, you pointed something out about my throat chakra and my voice and kind of this trying to drop it deeper <laughs> <laughs> which I've been trying to do forever and I listened to episode 11 of my podcast the other day with my husband so this was in 2016 mm -hmm. I sounded like a pipsqueak I <laughs> I sounded like a baby but I was I was young I wasn't a mother yet like hormonal changes have happened but it really spoke to me when you mentioned that and I feel everything is so connected, the throat, the womb, our pelvic floor, you know, having given birth and mm -hmm. this whole channel all the way up to the crown chakra and beyond. So yes, listeners, we're, we're going right it. We're, we're <laughs> like getting into it immediately. But I want to hear a little more about that because I know that you had thyroid cancer mm -hmm. in 2011. Mm -hmm. You were diagnosed and you're healthy now and you're a healer now so tell us a little bit about that journey well of course it began in my childhood and with my father and the way that um, he dealt with anger and emotion and very uh, on edge in the household and um, my parents were split since I was three but when I would see him at my grandparents it was you never knew if he was just gonna flip the switch and so I think that a lot of people, including myself, would call themselves an empath because of that, because we, in going in different environments, we had to gauge the environment. So it was like being on edge and feeling out everyone in the room. Like, when is my dad going to you know, lose his shit and start yelling and screaming and punching mm -hmm. things? Um, and so I became the peacekeeper and labor rising. Uh, my fire would come out. But it wasn't, there was no boundary there because I didn't know what boundaries were. And so I just knew that I had to manage the chaos in some way. And so I shut down and I shut down. And then, of course, in high school, I picked a relationship that was very trauma bond at 15, which is my son's father. So I've known him since I was 15. And so much healing work done around that. But allowing for abuse and the same thing mm -hmm. you know but that became so so codependent and that codependency and the theme of aloneness those are my really soul themes here to learn that well we're never alone and um so over time because a lot of times that build up happens over a decade or more and over time that suppression of my voice and the shame and holding that in absolutely built up and then I just had this really it was first small nodule come on my throat that was you could see it and then it got bigger and bigger quicker over a year and so I had a biopsy done and they were like oh you know it's benign well there's like a 10 percent chance for you know that to come up wrong and I looked at the person I was like nope that's not right really I knew it I just knew it but I I just I was so calm. I was, you know, somewhat not in my body at that time in my life. My son was born in 08, so I'd had a, I had a young son at the time. And I just knew it. And my form of the healing process cuz I didn't know what I know now, you know. No not in this world at all. Not the metaphysics, not the holistic. But I will say my mom's an astrologer and has been since my whole life. So I grew up going to spirit fairs and all that. I just didn't get into it. Um, but my option I knew at the time was removal. Like it, it just came up and I just knew that's what I needed to, to do. remove your thyroid. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't, there was no other option. Um, but I didn't know any other options. Mm -hmm. So this is where a lot of forgiveness and understanding our path is unique. So I had it removed in 2011 and when they removed it, you know, 
they do all the biopsy then. And so it was the first and the second stage of thyroid cancer. So it had come up benign and it wasn't. Oh my God. And you knew. I knew. I knew it because I knew that the lifestyle I had chosen and the relationship I was in and the suppression that I had done. And I just kept thinking like, there's something more, you know, I would go hide and cry in my closet and um, yearn for community and for a partnership that actually saw me and I just suppressed it and suppressed it. And so I had it removed and when I did, I knew, I was like, this is, this is the rock bottom. And so not very long after that, I left that relationship and became a single mother. And that's what began this whole journey then of now serving others and starting to get into my dharma and my gifts. Wow. So out of curiosity, what would you do now with the thyroid? Would you still have it removed knowing everything that you know now? Probably not. What would you do? I always say this as a joke, but I'm not. I was like, if. I would go into the jungle and plant medicines would be, you know, involved because I hold space for plant medicine and uh, I would go back to the earth and whatever would arrive in that way, whether it's going to indigenous cultures and saying, here I am, Mm -hmm. you know, and, and giving forward to that. But it's, it's lifestyle change, you know, and it's eating. I didn't eat well. It's the life that I chose in friendships and relationship. And so that was, that would completely have to alter overnight. I mean, it has to, you know, Mm -hmm. and I talk to women all the time and that are having issues either with, you know, cysts into endometriosis, you know, things like that. And, and it goes to the relationships we have Mm -hmm. and it's big, big, hard decisions of who gets to stay and, and where you are staying, whether it's the job or the people that you're around. So yeah, I would do that first and then watch it and uh, see what happened. But I've seen I've seen women heal the thyroid. I've seen women heal Hashimoto's, of course. I've seen women heal giant um, fibroids the size of grapefruits. I need <laughs> I needed to know you five years ago before I had a fibroid removed the size of a grapefruit. Mm. Exactly. That's why I'm smiling because I'm like, oh. I see I see myself in what you're saying Mm -hmm. very traumatic surgery by the way very intense I needed I had that feeling that you had about your thyroid five years ago I have to get this fibroid removed even though it's benign and it's not a tumor and all that I just knew Mm -hmm. for the future goals of fertility and health it had to come out and it it did it did have to come out but it was a rough time In many ways, I feel like I'm still healing. And that was in 2018. So I had a C-section without having a baby. That's kind of how it was. Mm -hmm. And then that's made the birth journeys now, like with my son. And I want to have more kids. A little more complex. I mean, I know you. I know. (laughs) You remind me of my doula. And she never thought my situation was high risk. Mm-hmm. I'm sure you would agree. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I don't want to put words in your mouth. Um, I just bring this up for all the other women listening because very often we're told, you know, we're high risk because of this or that. You're the perfect person to talk to about this. Mm-hmm. What kind of birth space do you hold? Are you a doula? Mm-hmm. You're a doula. Yeah, a doula. Physiological birthing. Mm-hmm. So a healthy woman doing her work mentally, emotionally, physically. Uh, lifestyle wise can naturally have a child you know we've been doing it for thousands of years and the body knows what to do the uterus contracts you don't tell it to do that it's not mind it's the body you Mm -hmm. know so um, my teacher very very uh, witchy woman her name is Wapio a lot of people know her in the world Uh, the Matrona is uh, her format and yeah, we just go back to trusting our body and what it's capable of doing. And just like when we have a fever, mm-hmm. you know, the body is heating up. Uh, we need that to not be suppressed. We don't want to hurry up and get rid of a fever. You know, it's why we vomit and all these things. You know, the body is a brilliant, brilliant being. And uh, we're along for the ride with it, you know. Mm-hmm. So in birth, the environment 100% makes or breaks the people there, 
you know, the ones that are supportive of the decisions that you're making. Huge. Definitely. Mm -hmm. Well, now that I've had one experience, I know what to do next time to make it a little less chaotic as I drink castor oil and put myself into death. Like I thought I was dying. I was convinced I was dying. It was more trippy than any plant medicine experience I've ever had. Which brings me to my next, because or else I'll go on about birth for like 30 minutes, Mm -hmm. but I have so much other stuff to talk to you about today. You hold space for plant medicine. Mm -hmm. And when we spoke and we did my session, I'm just going to get really vulnerable here and really tell the audience kind of what was going on with me, which they kind of know that I did the successions of ketamine therapy in November of last year. And it was tough. Mm -hmm. Um, I think it's a beautiful medicine. And I think the people who I was with, I trust them a lot. But I am a very highly sensitive person. And that doesn't even begin to cut it. I am a (laughs) starseed. I am not from here. It was too much for my body to hold. It was too much for my aura to hold. Mm -hmm. I had negative entities attached to me. For several months, I was reprocessing childhood traumas. I was recalling memories, repressed memories that I didn't know happened, that were sexual in nature. Terrifying. Mm -hmm. Um, And I was in a loop for like six months, and then I spoke to you, and you told me for sensitive people and for many people, that's too much I mean that's too too much so I mean of course there's every opinion out there I respect them all that's kind of what this podcast is about I would love to know your opinion and you know what you told me for anyone else who might be going through some psychedelic trauma well you know everything that I do now is based off of the things that I experienced you know that was uncomfortable you know so I don't want to paint this picture that I had my son and it was this beautiful home birth like physiological birth no it was hospital it was epidural it was pitocin it was everything that we're trying to get away from and the same with plant medicine I've had really beautiful journeys and there was this one that was like a death and I was with people I knew for years and I with my human eyes because I don't see things with my human eyes but I did that day and I got to see these like beings I call them like drive through window like fast food version like when I come in and just play around and it was really traumatizing but it's exactly what I needed to see and I was guided every step of the way like don't move off your mat you sit right here you don't play in that realm you don't do that you know, it was like, go outside, be alone, get away from it. But it was wild. It was a wild ride. And um, so after that is when I decided I'm going to hold space myself for people. So at retreats I do, and I do one-on-one. And then at the house I'm moving to on five acres, which I'm really excited about, I'm going to have smaller, you know, four people at a time. And to just welcome women in and to be in this sanctuary and to be in this holding space where the fire can come out and also the softening of you to be able to relax and just be plant medicine is not supposed to be chaotic it's not I mean the purging can happen of course crying and things like that but I've never ever held space for someone that lost their shit ever Wow, it's being in integrity so what we talked about and what my opinion was was it's it's a it's a boundary issue and lack of integrity because everybody is different and so you have to take that into account so if it's saying oh we're going to do this many in this many sessions but that might not be true for everyone you know the idea is with plant medicines is that eventually you do not need it that they're the mirror they're the ally they are you showing you to you and then eventually you don't need any of that you know you are source energy you have your own inner guidance and power and connection with that and so my plant medicine journey didn't start until about four years ago and my spiritual journey you know that was about the thyroid about that time 2011 2012 
a big wave of people can say that too about 2012 yeah yeah Yeah, I bet yeah so when we talk about the plant medicines that you work with we're talking about I'm guessing well you tell me is it ayahuasca psilocybin not aya Mm -mm, not aya okay no I don't feel called to aya um but I do have an amazing friend in Peru who she lives there now and she used to live in Oklahoma and she went there and studied but um, nope, psilocybin, um, hape, um, and then herbs. So Damiana is my favorite. Uh, very much so opens up the sexual centers, very much for uh, sexual healing, womb work, um, but psilocybin. Yeah. Amazing. And do you feel like you've reached the point in your journey where doing plant medicine is not necessary? Or do you do it with, because I know a lot of facilitators do it with, the person that they're holding space for no I don't yeah I don't I just sit there for six to seven hours and I hold space and I create the field and um, no I don't feel like I need to go in because I feel like I'm in there without taking it now and where you know before I would just take mm, a journey for me is two to three to four grams but for me, because I'm so sensitive, it was always like two and a half and that just shot me off. Mm-hmm. Now I can do a lot less. Like I could do a gram, I could do half of that and I could still meet people at that same space. And so then I was like, okay, now could I meet them in that space and not partake? And you absolutely can because you don't mm-hmm. need that. Mm-hmm. you know. And that's with the activating of what's already inside of you through breath and through just being still and, and nature. Yeah, nature really pulls it out of me in the same way. So Mm -hmm. I don't partake. I know lots of people that do. um, But if I did, it would be tiny, tiny little micro. Yeah, Mm -hmm. that's where I'm at. I mean, I don't hold space for people currently, but I think I will one day. I feel so cold and I was so devastated when we talked. I mean, not because of what you said to me, but I already knew my journey really deep into the plant medicine world doing a lot of plant medicine felt like it was coming to a close and maybe there will be another cycle Mm -hmm. I don't know but for now I feel I came I saw I did it I conquered I was in it for four years um and here we are Mm -hmm. and yeah gosh it's just it's really interesting, but I completely agree with you. It lives inside of us. Mm-hmm. And looking at you now, you're such a mirror, too. Like, I'm seeing your face shifting. I'm seeing so much. <laughs> you're very open. That's amazing. Yeah. yeah. I feel that way today, especially. Um, you know, we think about astrology in the way of cycles, and we're always going through many. I focus on seven with women. And, you know, there's the questionnaire of, of all the things that happen emotionally, physically, injuries, and, you know, 0 to 7, 7 to 14. Right now I'm at the end of a really big 10-year, 12-year cycle. And um, it's both terrifying and exciting. But being out here and being inspired by such inspiring human beings like yourself and doing the work and holding space and And having many different perceptions and and people on, you know, having conversations like this, it it's really opening me up to letting go of the past in bigger ways. Mm -hmm. Because when I was at home, even just like the last couple of days, it was like, oh, my God, what am I doing? Mm -hmm. Like, here we go. Here's the big leap. You know, yes. I feel it. Well, there's something in the air. Maybe you can tell us astrologically everyone I know is going through something really massive. Mm -hmm. I mean, people who are tapped in, people in my life who feel the cosmos and they feel the energy of the world. We're all going through something. I have a ton of friends going through divorces and breakups. Um, I mean, everyone I know, (laughs) so many people. And myself, it's more internal, really dealing with childhood trauma, I have no choice. I'm not Mm. trying to do that right now. I don't want to do that right now, to be honest. Mm. (laughs) I wasn't, I I thought I already did that. Um, That's what's coming up for me right now. It's like heavy stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, Jupiter just went into Taurus. Mm -hmm. That's huge. You know, when when we have Jupiter shift and we look at our house, you know, what house your Taurus is and what Jupiter's transiting through. 
But Chiron and Aries is a pretty big heavy hitter right now and will be mm. until 2026. So Oh wow. So that is the the inner masculine, you know, that is who we think we are and the external and our drive and our passions and someone with a Chiron and Aries can kind of feel like um I'm never going to get to be that in that place or that authority of my own life or is that going to happen for me? And so um so it's big for the collective in a big healing way. Um, but yeah, we're ending out really big cycles, especially when Jupiter shifts and the North node shifts Mm. in July. Oh, what does it shift into? Aries. Okay. So when anything goes into Aries, you're starting another 12 year or not 12 year, but 12 cycles, right? So you start at Aries and then we have 12 Zodiacs. And so we go around. And so, Mm -hmm. so that's really big, you know, so we've been in North Node Taurus. Wow. I was just counting out in my head. My Taurus is in my fourth house. Mm -hmm. So what does that mean for me? So shifts or let's talk. Well, you're talking about, you know, inner child work and Mm -hmm. that coming up. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's the mother. It's our roots. It's, you know, the emotional security and it can be land we live on, Mm -hmm. but it's like when I look at someone's chart, one of the very first houses I go to is the fourth. Really? Yeah, because if, if the Pluto or Uranus is in there, then I know there could have been a volcanic childhood, uh, lots of upheaval, Uranus's um, individuation, you know, and um, sudden changes. So, so interesting. Yeah. fourth house is pretty, pretty deep. Yeah, it is. My Uranus is in my 12th house, and... That's, that's intense, too. That's an ending. Pluto in... Wait, now I'm getting confused. Well, my Pluto's in Scorpio. I'm not sure which house. Yeah. Eighth, maybe the ninth house. And I'm not really sure. And Pluto's uh, Scorpio is around people our age, because mm-hmm, it's like a 14 mm-hmm. to 21-year cycle. Exactly. Yeah. How old are you? 37. 37. Yeah, I'm 32, yeah. so I'll be 33 in October. So let's get deeper into that whole astrology conversation, evolutionary astrology. How mm-hmm. did you get into that? And like, y- so for people listening, you did my medical astrology chart, mm-hmm. and that was fascinating. I still want to go back and listen to it, actually, because I was in a weird place at that time, and I want to like listen to it now that I'm a little bit more on a, the other end. Mm-hmm. Um how did you get into it and what is it and how can people how can people check it out well evolutionary astrology was created um by jeffrey wolf green and sort of going hand in hand also stephen forrest so stephen forrest is my mom and i's mentor my mom has been an astrologer since i was little um and then over time evolved more into the evolutionary side so stephen forrest He's an amazing, amazing storyteller and teacher. I always suggest any of his books. Um, But over the last 10 years is when I finally started getting into it because I was like, that was my mom's thing. And, you know, the spirit fairs in that world. And we I've always grown up being around very psychic people and going to them. And I always knew, you know, they knew some things because they would say, you know, very true things. Um, but I just kind of shunned it as well, just being, that's my mom's thing, not mine. Um, and so I call what we did cosmic mapping and where over time I'm like, okay, how do, what do I want to do with astrology though? What, what is my focus? How do I want to assist people with it? Cause it's a never ending learning growth. You're never going to stop learning astrology. You know, Stephen Forrest, when I hear him talk, I'm like, what the hell? Oh my God, there's so much more so much more to learn um and so yeah I started seeing these cycles where I started the seven year cycles um Rudolf Steiner he was one who speaks yeah, about Waldorf, that. Mm-hmm, right mm-hmm. yeah so seven year cycles and then the medical metaphysical anatomy aspect of it and then of course a couple years ago I got into German new medicine because of my friend Jessica and uh, found a really amazing mentor, Andy Lockmeers, with German New Medicine, and then uh, started getting more into the medical, metaphysical anatomy side. And metaphysical anatomy being in our fascia, in our muscles, in our organs, we store pain and trauma. And that's being pulled to the surface through what we call disease and illness, you know, but that's, in my opinion, in German New Medicine, that's the healing phase of the body. Like 
you don't say the problem is the fever. You say, oh, it's your body's healing, so it's coming forth. So when we look at everything, even my thyroid cancer, I was like, what was I healing from? So I started to see these links by women that I mentor, you know, because I do retreats, but then I'll do like three-month mentoring because I'm like, we've got to do three to eight sessions. That's the minimum because we've got to go deeper in this. So I started having them map these seven-year cycles of their life, you know, big things and also things that might not have seemed so big. But like we all have a teacher or a coach or someone who said, you know, something really fucked up and we remember it. And that little thing is trauma too. Like it seems little, but it's Mm -hmm. not. It doesn't have to be abuse, physical, mental, sexual, parents splitting up, you know, bones breaking, which they all have a purpose there. You know, both I broke both my arms at two different times. And the first time my parents were splitting up, the second time I was leaving elementary school, going into middle school, hitting that different phase of my life. So a break in a relationship is that the way we look at that. So I started just mapping these with women at retreats and my friends and, you know, trying it out on my friends. And then I was like, there is something really powerful here. So then I got in with the astrology part and I'm like, okay. So if the fourth house is where your Taurus is, and the Taurus is neck, thyroid, anything to do with the shoulders and any glands right here in our vocal cords, which I want to say earlier too, you know, our vulva and our vocal cords are mirrors. They are identical. They look the same. So when our sexual energy is suppressed, this is suppressed. Mm. And when that happens, uh, we talk from up here in our throat instead of down here in the diaphragm. Yeah. And it drops and what Mm -hmm. we were talking about before. Mm -hmm. So I started seeing all these correlations and I'm like, this is so exciting. Like, this is what I'm supposed to do because you feel that excitement. You're like, this is my purpose, you know. So I I would see, okay, that fourth house is family. That's the mother. That's the roots. That's the female lineage. You know, we talk about the female triad in in the chart, the feminine, which is cancer, um, Scorpio, Pisces, the water signs and very matriarchal. And so I'm like, okay, and I can go to transit. So I'm like, what happened around this age? Or from zero to seven, what was something you remember the most traumatic? Okay, seven to 14, when a woman starts to menstruate in that time and you start to develop and shift, what's something that happened? Then I'll go to the chart and I'll see in what planetary bodies are in the houses those represent and they mirror. And my mind is blown all the time. That is mind-blowing. And then how does German new medicine come into all this? Well, Dr. Hammer, a German physician, you know, started forming uh, German new medicine when he was alive. And, and he was doing, a, it was a connection with him and his uh, sudden loss of a son. And then um, what he linked with the lesions in the brain and doing brain scans. And he would see the correlations of, oh, this traumatic a uh, shocking event happens to us and this lesions in a certain part of the brain and then it goes to a biological system and then that biological system's running a program like I most definitely know I came in with an abandonment program and that's the kidneys and the kidneys is Libra and that's the skin as well you know wow and the skin is the most it's the largest organ stretched out you know and it's it's the barrier of relationship between us and the outer world so it's always going to pull up what the internal you know, inconsistencies are, imbalances, fears, you know, if you think about, of course, hormonal changes when we're teenagers, but it's the face, it's always the Mm -hmm. face, it's acne on the face, it's like facing a new world and our changing body, and it's the most confusing time of our life, Um, so yeah. It is all so fascinating, and I love how you work with all of it together, Mm -hmm. I mean, to tie together the evolutionary astrology with the medical stuff and the German new medicine, it blows my mind. And how do you know like that um, kidney is Libra and throat is Taurus? Like how did that, what, what system does that come from? Well, medical astrology is the correlation of all the signs ruling different parts of the bodies and the meridians. And so then, you know, there's just this mapping that we do through that. And then, um, later for me it was German New Medicine and I'm still learning that and that piece to that has been really powerful because 
with the hanging healings and the things that are reoccurring, that's what I start seeing a lot of. And I'm like, okay, I want more understanding of this, you know? And so hanging healings being like, um, every time this thing happens right after you get a cold sore, every time this incident happens, you know, you get the flu or you have indigestion or, and so all that is correlated to it's like okay let's map back to a week two weeks right before a month what just happened and I started noticing in people I was working with and myself of course I'm the test subject first and my son of course my 14 Mm -hmm. year old son and so like I would do things and he doesn't know this but like even sneezing you know it's like it can be like this body's release of of moving that energy Mm -hmm. and or yawning have you ever been in a session with someone working with someone you can't stop yawning so that's just the energy moving or burping or whatever it is but I would jump out of somewhere and scare him because we always like to try Mm -hmm. to scare each other and right after that within like five minutes he would sneeze really and I would hear him in the other room and I would just test things out like that interesting but the body's always clearing something Mm -hmm. you know so I just knew it I'm like I don't buy this seasonal allergy bullshit and then giving this solution to problems that you know they're not really trying to fix um and heal it was just like you know so what is the solution going deeper and understanding the metaphysical connection yeah yeah where it's like a program where oh that's abandonment or self-devaluation which we talked about Lyme disease and that yeah let's talk about Lyme disease we have a lot of listeners who struggle with either Lyme or something similar. I think all of the autoimmune conditions are the same. Yeah. (laughs) That's my opinion and very similar, if not the same. So tell me more about Lyme and the metaphysical connections. You know, Lyme is like um, burning the wick at both ends, but it's also self-devaluation. And I I told you, I think, about Shania Twain. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. my God. You did say that. Yeah. I need to watch her documentary. You that do. was like literally at the top of my list. But that just goes to show you I've been in a vortex. It's been really a lot of good. It. Yeah. Yeah. But that's, mm-hmm. you know, and Lyme disease in German New Medicine, you know, and the way that it's it's seen, it's so it it supposedly comes from a tick bite. But there are people that get diagnosed with Lyme disease that are not in the environments ever where it's like ticks are and so so I think there's something definitely always energetic going on too but so then but if we look at it like if it's a tick what what do ticks do they latch on they suck blood that's life force energy right so it's like if we're around a lot of people where we feel like we're getting the life force sucked out of us and doing things we don't want to do and constantly having to prove our worth and also our values based on our success and what we do and our output so she's a really good example of that because that's something that she experienced and then right after that it does affect the vocal cords and she lost her voice and then um, really had to self-evaluate okay I'm not just here because of my voice and my singing ability I'm much more than that Um, but you know the way in which her tone shifted and us talking about your voice and the different ways in which that it has shifted but um yeah we work with that and then it comes back in a new form because we've been rebirthed Mm -hmm. um and it comes to teach us something Mm -hmm. I feel it comes to teach us something and burning the candle at both ends is the definition of my life I try not to live that way anymore Mm -hmm. that was the lesson that came through with Lyme in 2018 and I've been trying to not live that way ever since but it's hard it's hard in a city like this it's hard in a profession like this one Mm -hmm. um and with the childhood stuff too Mm -hmm. like it's all so related I was always praised for being an achiever and being kind of a perfectionist and smart and successful and even from a young age like achieving Mm -hmm. was the thing and it's very hard to disconnect from that and it served me well in in many areas in my life but it's also been the root of a ton of stress Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, and that self-devaluation comes from, too, typically we're raised in environments where it is about status and about achievement and and how well you can do something. And so everyone that has been diagnosed with Lyme that I've ever talked to had that in their family unit where it was, like, you know, based upon that in some very type A, very left brain um, and so what happens is, you know, for a lot of those people, it's like this happens and it slows you down. But what have you been doing that wasn't really for you? That wasn't a part of what you're supposed to be doing, but mm-hmm. was handed to you. Mm-hmm. And I think for all autoimmune anything, the first thing that allopathy says is it's your body fighting against itself. And it's just, I really, really hate that. I hate that they, hate's a strong word, but I dislike very generously that they would even say that because the body is more complex and brilliant than any human will ever be able to explain especially the brain you know oh my god the brain is (laughs) so beautifully complex Mm -hmm. as I have seen through ketamine through ayahuasca psilocybin meditation dreams oh my god Mm -hmm. the stuff going on in our brains it's unreal yeah And I agree with you. Our bodies are wise. Mm -hmm. And I believe in many lifetimes. I don't know about you. Same. Yeah. Yeah. So sickness is tragic. I don't wish it upon anyone. Um, But I also understand as someone who's who was sick for many years and still struggles. This is my lifetime where I'm like, I'm getting some of these lessons. Mm -hmm. And it's definitely it's definitely helping my soul evolve. And I'm not saying for everybody listening, you have to be sick in order to evolve. No, No. we all have our lessons. And I think that's something that's been misconstrued. Mm -hmm. Whenever I say this was a gift for me, Mm -hmm. it's been misconstrued. People are like, oh, she says you have to be sick and otherwise you're not spiritual. No, no, (laughs) we all have our thing. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yeah. um, I've met many people that didn't have to go down this road, you know, and they had they have their own dharma and lessons to learn about it um but for me and the physical body and what i've learned through it it's very scorpionic i have a ton of scorpio i'm a scorpio moon south node um and when we look at scorpio or look at someone's scorpio placements um that's a lot of chaos and upheaval and and what happened in lives before that sometimes we can bring over and we're used to the chaos. We're used to the trauma. I love the word um, and eroticizing our pain. You know, we're in it and we're like, I hate this, but this is my story and it's what I know. And so, you know, for me, it's been alone. You know, I'm alone here. Um, I don't belong here on this planet. Like someone from up there, come save me, you know, those types of things. But I realized through getting closer with my body, which sickness does, you know, which birth does, it gets you so, so close to God. You're in the, you're in the void, you know, and we are a part of the void, but it gets you there. It's that portal. And when you're sick, all you can think about is being sick. When you have a fever or you're nauseous or you're in bed, you're not thinking about all the things that you need to be doing to impress other people. You're there, Mm -hmm. you're present. And when you feel that and, and plant medicine brings us here or even sweat, like going into sweat lodge, all you can think about is that heat and your breath and that's it and you get so close to mother earth and god and spirit universe whatever you want to call it and you are so present and that can become a turn on you know and not our pain Mm -hmm. but for a lot of people that i work with i have to just be really honest because that's i mean i'm just brutally honest like where do you get off on it because i have had to face that myself where do i like the story of being alone you know, and so, yeah, we come here to look at all those cycles and those mm-hmm. patterns. And I think that our astrological blueprint, something that we created before we came to the degree, to, to the minute, to the aspect, to the square, to the trine, to everything. And it was like, this is what we want to do. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. I totally agree. It's wild hearing you talk about this because I've known that with sickness and with Lyme, something that I felt subconsciously that I needed was to, in order to take a break, you have to be sick. (laughs) And so I would kind of fantasize almost about the time that I would 
get sick enough that I would have to take this huge break. And, um, yeah, it's awful That's because I didn't want to feel sick. I mean, it was the bane of my existence. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It becomes an identity. Mm-hmm. And that too. I quickly learned from working with people that that's now a part of their identity and are they going to allow me to be a mirror and help them unravel from that Mm -hmm. or are they going to dig their heels in even more yeah I mean people have to be ready when they're Mm -hmm. ready Mm -hmm. I remember seeing a healer someone from Australia who's kind of one of those like master healers that comes into town and does this healing on everybody in the room and who knows I think it works for some people it didn't work for me but I had been recently diagnosed with Lyme and I can remember sitting there thinking I hope I hope he doesn't heal me I need this right now Mm -hmm. like you know to admit this is very vulnerable I don't like that I was thinking that and I didn't want to be sick it's a weird catch-22 it was like I finally had a name for all my pain, all my challenges. And I didn't want it to just disappear. Mm-hmm. But I think it's because my soul knew it, it needs to teach you something. So it never would have disappeared because I wasn't ready. But the people in the room who were ready, maybe that was what they needed. And they connected with his, with his healing. Mm. Who knows? Um, there's so many uh, other questions I want to get to with you today. I was looking at your website and looking at the questions that you um, that you have on your website that you ask the women who are applying to mentor with you. Mm-hmm. So I wanted to ask you some of them because I think that they're really, really interesting. And I wanted to hear your answers. And then you can tell us why you ask these questions too because it's not a typical application. <laughs> Choose an element. I think that a lot of times we, um, we choose something that we want mirrored back to us but sometimes we don't let it in so when i ask about an element like earth air fire water it's like what we feel like we want and need and are we allowing that to happen so Mm -hmm. when someone chooses fire i'm like they want to unleash something that dragon wants to be birthed if it's earth there's more of a okay we're in a physical human body let's be in it you know let's let's sit in it what are all the feelings that it's going to pull in so so what would you be today? Today? Mm-hmm. Um, I would say earth. Yeah. Very Me much. too. Um, normally I would say air because I am a triple Libra mm-hmm. with a Aquarius rising, Aquarius north node, Mars and Gemini. I'm an air girl. Mm-hmm. But I have so much of that. That's not really what I need. Yeah. I want to be grounded. Yes. And we have to be around those people that offer that mirror back mm-hmm. to us, which is what I feel like all of what healers are. Healers aren't, you know, doing something to you. They're having your field go to where their field is in that frequency and with that love and with that intent. And then they're asking you, come where I'm at. And I don't go where people are in their victim stories and in their, you know, all of that. So I'm like, come, come up here. Mm, it's a good view so from here. So powerful. <laughs> Oh my God. I love it. Choose a color, purple, blue, green, yellow, orange, red. I just associate those with different, you know, energy centers. So So what would yours be? um, Right now, I think for, so if I'm looking at it from what I want more activated, um, it would be the root. So I would think about like that really beautiful, deep red, you know, anchoring, like, what I'm worthy of truly and like owning it and grabbing mm-hmm. it. And today as we're talking, the North Node and Jupiter are in a conjunction in Taurus. Mm. And almost the exact three degrees will be like over this the next day or two. Um, so, you know, that doesn't happen often. Yeah. And so we all need to really grab that and utilize the hell out of it. How do we do that? Well, it's our values and our talents. And so what you do aligns you and and what you feel passionate about aligns you with the people like you and I talking it's just like me being myself and being unapologetic about it and just also being extremely vulnerable and authentic um, is going to align me but I have to feel worthy of that connection that money that you know group of people and friendships and all of that um, mm-hmm. at the same time so mm-hmm. definitely worthiness is a huge piece uh, choose an animal dove dolphin turtle snake hawk lion yeah so the different personal power aspects of a lion solitary 
Um, doesn't apologize for its roar. Dove, peace, love. Mm. I very much see doves all the time. Think about my son. Um, turtle, it's like steady, get slower. You know, snake, metamorphosis, mm-hmm. shifting, changing, mm-hmm. kundalini. Um, so I just kind of get a glimpse into people's psyche. And so it's also fun in games. It is fun. Yeah. I think I would choose dolphin. Play. Yeah, play. I could definitely use more of that. <laughs> Um, I mean, there's other amazing questions. You guys can look at Britt's website to read through the rest of them. I think they're so good. Like, you wake up tomorrow and money doesn't exist anymore. How would you create your day? Yeah. These are things that make me really think. But what would be your response to that question? Well, coming from a place where I've been in survival most of my life and I thought the 9 to 5 was just the way that I was going to exist. And how do you get out of that? You Mm -hmm. know, it's like... You're in this cage with the doors open the whole time. You know, you can fly out at any time. So I realized that, um, yeah, I wanted to be able to do what I wanted to do and wake up, have slow mornings, be able to breathe, be able to watch the sunrise if I wanted to and um, to take things slow. But then every single decision that I made and person that I was working with, either on their chart or one-on-one or at a retreat, that I was giving them all of myself. But how was I going to be able to do that when I'm at a place that I don't like, that feel like is suff- sucking my life force energy out of me? And then, you know, simultaneously I was living a nine to five because I worked in the world of allopathy. I got to see that side of it. Oh, did you? I did. What did you do? I worked in many different departments, professional liability. I worked for an eye doctor once, executive offices. um, And uh, yeah, I got to see all that side of it. And then simultaneously in 2015, I started hosting retreats and doing one-on-ones and and I dove deeper into that. So I was living a double life and then raising a child by myself. So also to all the women listening who want to jump and leap and do this and, and do what they're really passionate about or coaching or in the health Saturn is in Pisces. You know, that's that's a really good time right now in the next couple of years. But know that even if you have kids, even if you're a single parent, it's possible. And you just keep going and you keep putting the work in and you keep showing up. That's the thing, you know, in your communities, um, doing community events, going to things that like make your pit sweaty and get uncomfortable. Mm-hmm. But you have to get uncomfortable. Um, but leaving that and knowing that I could live this life and that I was worthy of it. Um, there aren't any excuses, you know, get rid of the excuses. Oh, but, oh, but that's the ego. Mm-hmm. You know, I didn't come from wealth and money and, you know, like quite the opposite. And it just, what is wealth? What is that to you? Cause mine is now looking outside of my bedroom window and seeing these trees and seeing this land and, seeing my son be able to go through his last four years with me in you know my home with me as he's going to be 15 this year and that this is what I've wanted for the last couple years is to have this room to breathe in this openness so we have to open this Mm -hmm. throat we have to open our heart and if you have a womb it's got to be expressed through that how do we express our womb (laughs) tell us through the throat, through the speaking, um, and this is my personal opinion, but I'm going to just go ahead and say it here, but get off of birth control. Get off of anything synthetic if you can. And um, that's my own personal mm-hmm. lived experience. Mm-hmm. Um, go back to trusting your body without that, anything synthetic. Um, because then when you learn your cycle and when you learn those four phases that happen every single month, It is a power like you have never, ever felt. And on my journey, I started being around women in their 40s, 50s, and 60s. So when I was in my 20s, I was around the ones who were going through that sage phase. Mm. And they are no bullshitters. Mm -hmm. And they will look at you and be like, oh, are you liking that story you're telling? Or do you want something different? Wow. I know. That's how I see you, by the way. I know you're 37, Mm -hmm. but you definitely give older vibes I mean you look young and youthful and radiant and amazing but it's it's wise Mm -hmm. what I what I feel coming from you 
And when we were on Zoom together, I would have guessed that you were older than you are. Mm. And seeing you in person, I'm like, she's my age. She's <laughs> young. Um, I don't know. And, may, and maybe that's what I needed to see that day. Yeah. Someone come through who had that wisdom. And it's true. My friend that I trust the most is, is 42. She knows what's going on. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We have to go through initiations and not all those have to be super traumatic, but they're mm -hmm. our own lived initiations and experiences. So I think the, the biggest superpower as a woman um, from my own lived experience is being able to trust your own body. Mm -hmm. And when you do that and you know it, and I, I know to literally almost the hour sometimes where, you know, I'm going to start menstruating or I'll know when I'm ovulating. Um, there's no, there's no bigger power than that mm -hmm. of being embodied. So that's how I view embodied and it's very sacred and personal. And I also too want to say things to in regards to surgeries because we've had them and that's a ceremony too, you know. So I don't think anything is by coincidence. I don't think anything is quote unquote wrong. They're just experiences. Some of them are very undesirable and some of them have karmic ramifications mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that people who are living a life hurting others will have to repay. Mm -hmm. um, but I think that that can be a ceremony too. So forgiveness and moving through shame, that's also how you take your power back. Mm -hmm. Wow. So for the people listening who are struggling with an autoimmune disease or cancer or whatever mm -hmm. they might be dealing with, if you could give them one tip, what would it be? I would say congratulations. And can you see it from that place? And can you now sit still and in your power? And what do you really want and what changes need to be made? And you're at this place where there's no more bottom. You've hit that. So congratulations. Now the only way is to go up and forward. Mm -hmm. And so what needs to be expressed from you, you know? And I think that we all came here to live extraordinary lives. And I agree. some people might want simplicity that can look ordinary where it's like, oh, I just want some land and chickens and I don't need to do anything else and be seen or heard or do what, you know, we are doing, you and I. Um, but it's still not ordinary mm -hmm. because what they're doing on land is leaving a forever energy mark. And so I hope that even when people don't see like what we're doing or I could never do that or have conversations or be seen in that way, but what you're doing through even just the mindset of I'm living an extraordinary life shifts that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's so. really powerful. Yeah. I saw something recently. It was a quote that said, true success is a calm nervous system mm -hmm. that speaks to me yeah that's the goal that is my goal and it's not something that I've felt very often in my life mm -hmm. and when you think of it Same. that way yeah. no wonder I got sick um yeah. and now that's my main priority yeah. you feel so grounding to be around by the way I would guess that you were an earth sign no. but I know that you're a Sag that has been you know, work in progress through aging and through maturity and through life experiences mm -hmm. that brought me to my knees. Mm -hmm. So thank you for saying that as a reflection. I worked really hard with that. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. And do you know your human design? Yes. Two, four generator, triple split, quad right, um, right angle, cross of rulership. Wow. Two, four. I have a lot of two, fours in my life. My son is a two, four. My mom is a two four. Mm. He's a manifesting generator. She's a projector. Two three of my best friends are two fours. Mm -hmm. It's a good. I'm a four six reflector. Mm. Yeah. So it's yeah. I think the four sixes and the two fours we understand each other. Mm -hmm. um, the final question I want to ask you today, and then like 100 percent you're coming back on. So <laughs> Topanga it is all yes. over again. Maybe <laughs> I'll be living there by then. Um, how can people work with you? I'm sure there's so many people listening who want to work with you. Uh, my website is Brit-Johnson.com and my Instagram is Venus underscore rising underscore because my rising sign is Libra ruled by Venus. Um, tried to change it, but I'm like, there's no 
open availability for my name yeah there. it's become impossible let me say i think every single username is taken it is yeah it's crazy i but like yours yeah and there's some fake accounts out there that mm-hmm. you know mm-hmm. try to mimic but um i post in my stories all the time and do live so just look out for that one but um yeah through my website you know uh i really really enjoy now the cosmic mapping and and working together with people for longer stints of time. Mm-hmm. So that's pretty much what I've been doing. This was amazing. We could go on forever. <laughs> One other question. Where can people learn more about German New Medicine? LearnGNM.com is a really great resource. And they have an index. And you can go to the index and look up all the different um, injuries, disease. But I really, really love Andy Lock Mirrors. Um, and you can just Google her and find her. And she's okay. an amazing teacher. And once once you do the prerequisite and just do that, you can get on her monthly or weekly Monday calls. And they'll, she'll just riff about things that are topic and, and the body and the systems. And Do you feel like it's connected at all to Louise Hay and her work? Like you can heal your life. She has all of those metaphysical um, connections to each disease. Yeah, I see that more as the metaphysical anatomy. Mm-hmm. 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 And there's a really amazing book uh, by Yvette Rose, Metaphysical Anatomy. Okay. Yeah, it's huge. I have to read it. But yeah, I would say that she is more on the metaphysical side as Dr. Okay. Hammer was very much the brain and that receptor that it is and then what it would channel through the rest of the body. Mm-hmm. So it was very much more physiological rather than metaphysic, but... Okay. I mean, there's so much to learn here. I'm like, what? Um, No, I understand. I completely follow, but I'm fascinated Mm -hmm. by it all. I don't, okay, this, (laughs) I'm still talking, but we're going (laughs) to wrap it up. One other question, and I I really didn't even want to say this or talk about it, but I'm going to because you're the right person to ask. When I talk about German New Medicine, a few people have said to me, I can't believe you're talking about this. It's affiliated with Nazi. Oh, like, no. No, I'm Jewish, you know, like, is this, I can cut this part out. I just, I don't, I hate getting the naysayers and I just want to tell them what's well, up. Yeah, I mean, that's valid. I, I've never seen that association with it, but I also want to say this. I don't follow every single thing about anything. Same. So, like, I, just because we're talking about German new medicine, for example, doesn't mean that we're like, living with the creator of it yeah. i mean he's not even alive they changed it i think from german new medicine they call it something different mm-hmm. now as well because of that what do they call it i don't remember because i've seen like two different versions um but yeah i would have to look that up but i think that's probably why because of that mm-hmm. but no and he even went into hiding at the end of his life because of what he was healing and how he was healing people but there are some things that I don't really vibe with necessarily with German New Medicine, honestly, you know. Um, so I'm just very discerning in that way. I see the connections and I see where there's programs running and I see, oh, this is what he found. But, you know, when it comes to certain diseases, you know, I, I don't agree completely that there are things that just aren't in existence in the way that German New Medicine. But the mind is the powerful thing, you know. Bruce Lipton's my favorite. Oh, this. he's the best. That's what I was reading the whole time I was in Costa Rica. His books. Yeah. So you know, he talks about churches that grew up drinking strychnine and getting bit by rattlesnakes, and those people were so, you know, just absorbed within. Well, God will protect us, and they don't die, you know. Right. And that's how powerful the mind is. So, mm-hmm. so you have to be discerning whether it be because there's so many different types of astrology Mm -hmm. and there's people that come to me all the time and they're like actually you know it's not a gemini season i just want you to know that Mm -hmm. you know and i'm like cool (laughs) right because everyone's entitled to their own approach but they all exist yeah well we all live in our own realities Mm -hmm. that's Something I'm learning more and more every day. Yeah. I try to blend my reality with whoever I'm with, and then we create our own. But that's not even always possible, depending no. on who you're with. And what a beautiful thing. Yeah. That you see that flower differently than I see the flower. Yeah. 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 Who knows if we're all even seeing the same colors. I walk into shit. rooms, and I, I'll mess with my mom. She's a Pisces and not fire at all. 
and I'll be like, how many people in this room do you think aren't real? <laughs> I love that. <laughs> then we think in the same ways. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my God. Well, thank you so much for coming on. Everyone listening, check out Brit, all of her incredible offerings, her retreats. Thank you so much. I'm very grateful. Thank Me you so too. much. <laughs>